How's it cooking good looking? Today we are making francesinha. Francesinha is a Portuguese meat sandwich and it was traditionally made in Alentejo, which is a region south of Lisbon. But the guy who invented it down in Alentejo, he actually didn't have much success. So he brought it up north to Porto and they loved it up there so much that today it's one of the most famous things to eat when you go to Porto. So we have heard many times living here in Portugal that the secret of a francesinha is in the sauce. So most of the things we need for the sauce are chopped. The bacon are already chopped, the onion needs to be chopped, the garlic needs to be chopped, and our two beautiful potatoes also needs to be chopped. You smash the garlic before you cut it. If you don't like to do it like this, you can also use one of the tools that are very famous for people who doesn't like to touch garlic. Let me show you what it is. This is your best friend if you don't want a smell of garlic in your hands. Look at this. Look how easy it is to peel this garlic after you smash it. It's the easiest thing ever. For the onion, I'm gonna peel it. We're gonna chop the onion in half. We're gonna cut the onion pretty big. We don't want small chops or anything. So we just chop it up like this. And when you chop an onion, this is also a good trick. First you go this way, you leave this little knot on. Very important, that holds the onion uh, together for you. You turn it around, give it a cut here in the middle. Hold your hands like this, one finger a little further ahead. And then you let your knife slide on your fingers. The potato needs to be peeled and cut into cubes. So if you are wondering now why I'm using potatoes and how this is going to look like a francesinha sauce, it's because we are going to blend everything. That is why the potatoes are in cubes, the onions are in big parts. So now we come to my little favorite part where I twist up the recipe to my own favorite, what I like the most. And normally the sauce that you use for francesinha is also made with port wine and whiskey. But we are on Madeira. So I'm gonna use the port wine and the Madeira sweet wine because I think it's gonna give a really nice sweet taste to the sauce. We're gonna use half a daisy liter of this, which I happen to know is half a shot glass. I think it can take a little bit more, it's fine. You cannot have too much alcohol. Oh my God, the smell of this one is really nice. Mm. Normally you would actually use white wine but I wanted to use red wine because I didn't have any white wine. Two shot glass. And a splash because it's red wine. We cannot go over to the stove yet because there's another twist to the recipe. You want the francesinha sauce to have a lot of flavor. So instead of just using bacon for the sauce, I am also gonna use a little bit of chorizo because you do want this to be spicy. So this is gonna give it a little bit of a spicy flavor. There you go. We're gonna start adding some oil. You give it maximum heat, and as soon as it starts heating up and you can feel that it's getting hot, you are ready to put in your bacon and your chorizo. In a francesinha sauce, you need a lot of olive oil. So we're actually gonna add two deciliters of olive oil. And now, we're gonna add everything else here to simmer. We're gonna put in some bay leaves, I'm gonna put in some salt. I would say like a teaspoon of salt for now. I will also add some Wojciechter sauce. I am using approximately a tablespoon of Wojciechter sauce. And this is only because Jon and I like it very spicy. So this hot sauce is a spicy version. You can actually pick whatever hot sauce you like. If you want them a little less spicy with another flavor, you can use that as well. I'm gonna leave in the chili. Whole. Now we are ready for our little alcohol blend. A cerveja, the Portuguese beer. I don't know which beer they drink the most in Porto, but uh, we're gonna go with the Superbuck. Half a liter of delicious Superbuck beer. Look how foamy it is, it looks delicious. Our tomato sauce goes in. You can actually use real tomato sauce. I use tomatoes that are just diced because uh, I'm gonna blend it regardless. This is just a little cube of beef stock that I'm also adding in. 
I don't necessarily want to put more salt in after this because this is also salty. That's why I use very little salt from the beginning. So now this is just going to stand here and simmer for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, we can continue with the rest. So we are going to use fresh sausage for this. And I actually picked these ones, which are both pork and beef, because I like the flavor of both. So we're going to cut them open and they're going to go in the pan before we roast our steak. Before we fry our meat here, I'm just going to taste this. Mm. It's better than I expected. It's so good. It just needs pepper. That's what it needs. A lot of people would use butter, for example, to uh, fry their stuff in, but we use fat here because every time you have leftover fat, it's such a shame if you don't use it because it's got so much flavor and fat from animal. And when the fat is really, really hot, I'm gonna put the sausage on first, fry it on both sides, no salt, no pepper, but I will prepare my steak with a little bit of salt and pepper on each side. I gotta say, I wish you guys could smell what I can smell. I'm gonna cook this so it is medium. Woohoo! This looks so good. I'm very stoked. I'm gonna remove our leaves here. I'm gonna leave them alone. This chili was not as spicy as I had hoped for. Uh, so I might actually end up putting even more of my chili oil in it. Depending on your supplier, some chilies are really nice and spicy and have a lot of heat. Other chilies are like a pepper fruit, you know? So you never know, so test it before maybe. Mmm, it smells so good. I can smell all the alcohol. I'm gonna put a little bit more alcohol in, because I just tried it. And it needs a little squeeze of red wine, a little bit more. And that's why you have to go and follow the recipe below if you really want to cook this perfectly. Everything that I added on in the end is also in below. Oh my, okay. Adding in the alcohol last minute was the best idea because now it has the little flavor of the alcohol, just how we like it. It's so good. This is my favorite part. I actually made another twist. I'm gonna make a, a McDouble, like a double Francesinha. So it's not a Francesinha, it's not a little Frenchman, as you say in Portuguese. I did it to, to, to a kixel. First, a nice piece of toast. Then, a piece of nice Portuguese cheese. Whatever cheese, but if you can find Portuguese cheese, it's preferable. And this is why I think that Francesinha should actually be called the Portuguese meat lover sandwich because we put some ham, our sausage. Mm -hmm. We grab our steak, put here another piece of cheese. This is actually more than enough for anyone to eat, but we're gonna add more cheese, more ham, and some spicy pepperoni. Put some cheese, last piece of bread, Mmm, look at the bread. Oh, I love the spongy bread. This is actually gonna go in the oven before we seal the deal, because as you see, we have two delicious pieces of cheese left. We're gonna put them on top after this has been in the oven, 200 degrees Celsius, 10 minutes. And then this is gonna go on top and the sauce is what's gonna melt the top cheese. So when you talk to professional chefs that actually cook the Francesinha quite often, there are some controversy. As some people say, do not put the Francesinha in the oven because everything is already hot and you don't want the bread to get too soggy when all the fat goes in the bread. Other people says, put it in the oven, get this little ice and toast on top, melt the cheese in the oven. And then finally people say, melt the cheese with the sauce. So what I am gonna try and do today is actually combining everyone's hysteria into one recipe. So some of it is in the oven, some of it is not in the oven. The cheese is gonna be melted with the sauce and we'll see. Are you happy that we have leftovers, Lara? Dance, dance for me. Oh, <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm gonna move this over here then more cheese. Ta -da. <laughs> this is the star of the show. So I got the exact texture that I wanted for this sauce, which is kind of thick. Then it sticks to everything we eat.
Are you ready? Hello, I'm the camera guy and her better half. I've been drooling while you've been making this. And we're gonna cut it open and see if it looks as good as it has to. Oh my god. Okay, oh I am god. ready to take the first bite. Are you taking oh the first? God. Do you want the first bite? How do you like it? Mm, the sauce is unbelievable. It is? It has just the perfect spiciness to it, not too much. Yeah, and, it's not mm. too spicy, but it, it should have a bite. Okay, my oh, turn. Oh my god. I don't think I can eat this much. <laughs> Mmm, mmm, mmm. Guys, if this video made you hungry, give it a thumbs up. If it also made you drool, please subscribe to the channel. And if it gave you sudades to Portugal, comment. I want to see how many Portuguese we have out here. I'm gonna eat now. Goodbye.